I've seen quite a few bushcrafters do a thing called the dollar store challenge where you spend ten dollars at Dollar Tree buy a few items and then spend 24 hours out in the woods or wherever with those items. Now, living in the UK uh, we deal in pounds <coughs> but uh, we do have a similar store uh, called Poundland. So I've been into Poundland and I've spent me £10 and I'm going to do the dollar store survival challenge. Now I'm not exactly sure on the rules but I've seen Wrangle Star's video where he does mention some things that you have to be able to do with the items you've purchased. Now due to the time of year, it's uh, mid-January, so the weather is not too favourable. The area I'm going to will be not too favourable. And I'm not that experienced. So I'm trying to stay in the spirit of the thing, but there will be some slight variations. Anyway, number one on the list was water. Now I know I'm going to find water where I'm going, but I also wanted the plastic bottles so I know I've got three litres of clean water so apart from the weight uh, that was one thing I considered uh, worthy. I really struggled with something to cook in and this isn't ideal but it was the only thing I could come up with for a pound which is a baking tray so I'll be able to use that to cook to cook it. String or cordage again was very limited but these three balls of cotton string each of them does it give me the length each of them is 50 meters so there's 150 meters of okay fairly weak cordage but hopefully it'll do. Because I've got a long walk in because of the time of the year, it's, it's, it's cold out, it's going to be freezing overnight. And there may, there may be snow forecast for tomorrow. Uh, so I considered food high up on the list of priorities. So rather than spending one pound on food, and I think the rules on food are you've got to make two meals, I actually spent two pounds. And for me two pounds, well for one pound, I got both um, pasta and soup, so there's a good two meals there. There's three, just three sachets of soup in there. But I'll get a good two meals out of that. And then for the walk in and out, I bought a packet of biscuits for a pound. Which will have loads of sugar and fat in, so they'll be high in energy content. A knife is uh, absolutely important and again I was stinted in the type of knife I would, go. I would much rather have a, a smaller knife than that, a full tang knife, but I won't be using this as a machete. Uh, if I bat on it, if I use it to bat on wood I'll only do it with very small pieces of wood. So hopefully it'll hold up. I won't open it until tomorrow so I don't know how sharp it is. You've got to be able to make light uh, fire as well. So I could have got lighters or matches. So I've gone for the three pack of three boxes of matches and each box it says here average contents 250. Presumably that's per box. So I probably won't take three boxes with me. I'll probably only take one box but I might split, split it up. I haven't got a, I didn't buy a torch because if I'd bought a torch there'd been no batteries with it but I have bought 40 tea light candles so as long as I can keep those sheltered or it's not too windy then they'll give me a little bit of illumination they'll help me fire start and I might be able to rig up some method where they keep me warm I don't know now as for shelter again I was stinted with um, tarpaulins or shower curtains or t 
tablecloths or whatever so I spent two pounds on getting two two lots of ten bags ten refuse sacks 50 litre refuse sacks and I haven't opened one of these yet so I don't know how big 50 litres is what area they're going to cover but one thing I can tell you straight up is they are incredibly thin so any wind on those, any sharp objects on those and we're going to be in difficult. I did ask if you get a free carrier or if I had to pay for carriers. Well you have to pay for carriers so the carrier will not be included in the expedition. So I'll probably have to use one or two of these sacks distributing this load and distributing these, the heavy items, in, in my pockets because it's, it is a two hour walking so either that or I'm going to have to make up some sort of Roy Croft carry pack thing which is going to eat into me into me cordage right there's one other thing that I will be taking with me which doesn't come under the rules but because of the area the remoteness of the area I'm going to uh, the time of year and the fact that uh, the weather can turn quite suddenly and be very uh, bad where I'm going is I'm taking a little bag with me and this is for the camera and the tripod, the tripod will, will go in there and a few little pieces which I'll be taking with me which won't contribute um, really to the camping uh, but will aid a little bit to the camera work that's spare batteries spare SD card and notebook pen and pencil then for emergencies I'll be taking a mobile phone I'll be, I'll be wearing a watch, that's the only other thing by the clothes I'm standing up in I'll be wearing is a watch. Where I'm going fog can come down and it's real easy to get disorientated so you could end up walking a lot of extra miles until you figured out where you actually were as long as you didn't start walking around in circles. So I've got a little cheap compass which I do know points north, south, give or take the uh, variation. I've got a whistle, which has got another little cheap compass on it, not to be relied upon, but it's a good indicator. And it's got a, <laughs> a totally unreliable uh, temperature sensor on it, but it does work as a whistle, and that's the only reason really I'll be taking it. And for emergencies, I'm taking a bike torch. Uh, you'll, see, you'll, you'll see the area I go to when I get there. So that's the equipment I'll be taking with me. So I've got a couple of concerns. Um, one is packing all this lot up so as I can carry it in. The other, although I know where I'm going, I've not been there for a long time, so I don't know what sort of resources I'm going to find there, other than I know those resources are going to be soaking. Uh, and it's going to be cold, uh, so that's the reason why I spent two pounds and not one pound on food. Uh, right, so that's my equipment. I intend to set off early tomorrow morning to give me the most time to get on scene and assess where I'm going to set up my little camp uh, and I'll make use of natural resources obviously and I'm undecided whether it's within the rules or within the spirit of the rules to make use of unnatural resources man-made materials that you find discarded on the way there because if if I, if I do decide to do that, or was allowed from the outset to do that, I wouldn't need to carry the, the three litres of water with me. I'd probably take a litre just for emergencies. 
but uh, I know there's going to be plenty of water there and I know I'll find lots of things like water bottles and tin cans on the way. So I won't spin it out too long, that's it for the gear. I'll be setting off at more or less first light tomorrow morning. I'll show you the forecast on the computer. It's, it's not bad, but obviously given the time of year, it's not brilliant and it can get quite bad quite quickly at this time of year. Just before I go, uh, there's one more thing I'd like to mention. Particularly because of the time of the year, the remoteness of the area I'm going to and the fact I'm going on my own. It is important to let somebody know where you're going, what your route will be, when you think you will be back and what would be a reasonable time beyond that time that people should start getting concerned. It's it's easy to think everything will go according to plan, uh, but it's, it's very, very easy for things to go badly wrong. I have got a mobile phone, but whether or not I can get to a reception where I am, I don't, I'm not absolutely sure. So that's just something to bear in mind if you're following doing this sort of thing. Uh, don't just think of yourself, think of everybody else's. Well I've set off at half past six. I've been going for over an hour now. I've come up from down there. You'll hear the traffic noise, the wind noise. I just pan round. I don't know whether you can make that out, but you can see the ground's frozen. I'll be making my way up there and over the top. So there's about another hour to go. Okay, I'm on my way up through that wood and uh, I just thought I'd stop because I found two things actually. But I'll also take this opportunity to explain I've not brought that knife with me that I showed you. I've brought a much, much smaller one. Due to the area I'm in and the UK knife laws, I really had to bring something that was legal in all the situations I might be travelling through or find myself. So I ditched the really big one and just brought this small knife. So. That's going to hamper things a bit, but it is what it is, and we'll make do. Uh, the pack to carry my stuff up, or a lot of the stuff, a lot of the water bottles, I didn't bring all of them, I've got them in my pockets, in my pockets, and uh, in my pockets, basically. I built this little bag out of the polythene bags. Uh, so hopefully I can recover all these polythene bags and use them. So my food and my cooking and my candles and stuff, that's all we've got. Anyway, the reason we've stopped here is because of this tree here. And I don't know my trees too well. That's something I've got to uh, do a bit more work on. Uh, but I know this is an ash tree. It's a dead ash tree. It's in a dangerous uh, condition. It's going to going to drop down any time soon. But on the ash tree is one of the most useful fire lighting furnaces because it's useful straight off the tree and that's one I've mentioned before and that's uh, in fact, it's one here on the floor which is wet but it's Daldinia concentrica. That one's wet and I'll take a couple off the tree. I'll show you them on the tree. how dangerous that tree is and then all those black blobs up there the Daldinia concentrica so all I've got to do is find myself a large stick and knock them off and get them off without that tree falling on me head right but if I just pan you around you couldn't make it up
that lying on the floor. Now, I'm not saying it's much use, but it'd be better than a, some of them fancy shells that you see them using on desert island bogies. Do I take it or do I leave it? Found in the woods. It's a survival situation, I would definitely take it. Because it's probably useful for all sorts of things. Anyway, let's see. See if it's any good. That's good. Better than bugger all, isn't it? I'm just putting together a couple of sticks. Uh, I might be able to make a pack frame. Okay, there we go. We're living the lap of luxury. I've made the pack frame. I've got the polythene I found uh, tied to it with another bit I found. And the saw and my original equipment. Uh, so all I've got to do now is uh, get a few extra cords for because I'm not too happy with the bramble that I'm going to tie it round onto myself with. Get a few extra cords for when they keep snapping and uh, and we're away. Couldn't be better. In fact I think I'll have a biscuit to celebrate. As you can see I put two struts across the back because otherwise there's there's nowhere to tie stuff on suitably. Uh, I'm not happy with the straps, I'll have to redo the straps and probably twine some bramble together and make it a bit stronger. Anyway, I'm going to have a biscuit now and then we'll be moving on. I'm up over the top now. I've got a terrible sweat on. I've had a few problems with my pack frame, the uh, brambles snapping. So I've only got it on one shoulder at the moment, but I've also increased the weight because I found another bit of policy. I'm in a wood, birch wood now going over the top of the mower. I expect to find a few birch polypore in here. So that'll give me something for a cup of tea. It's about, about 10 o'clock, I'm not sure of the exact time. It's taken me a lot longer than I thought to get up onto the top because I've been spending a lot of time uh, making that pack frame, adjusting that pack frame and then finding more gear to load it up with. Okay, it's getting a little excessive in the bogginess now. Uh, I might... Yeah, this pack frame's getting hung up on stuff. I don't want to get, well, plenty of time to get dried out, but I don't really want to get soaked. A plastic bottle in there, I don't think we'll be getting that. I don't think we'll trust this bridge either. I don't want to be going for a swim and I don't want to take this camera for a swim either. Uh, right, we'll risk it for a biscuit. There we go. And rewarded with another plastic bottle which we'll have to leave where it is, which is a shame because the countryside is getting littered. Okay, I better shut down now because I won't have that much battery power. Okay, this is base camp. 
the first thing is this is covered in sweat so I've got to get this dry so we'll hang this up It's not a very good place for a fire this, unless I can find a lot of stones, because there's a lot of ground, peaty, grassy ground. This time of year is not so bad, but you don't want to set the roots on fire. Right, put a jump rope. Well, it's 12 o'clock now and that's the frame done well almost done I've got a few bits there to snap off it's just like a just like a V uh, triangle and I'll just get under there be a tight fit I've got a lot of bracken to put on it yet See what them poly bags do. I'll just hold them poly bags in place with sticks. So I've got a lot more wood to get, and then I've got bracken to get. So the wind's coming up towards me now. From so it's well placed for wind. It's quite a cold wind now. We've lost lost the sun. It's clouding in. T-shirt will be frozen dry. Okay, with the uh, polythene I found on the way up here and the wood on site and I've used a one ball of string so far I've got the makings of a shelter there. Only trouble is I've got about two fists, two hours of sun left so that's not a lot of time. I've not had a fire, I've not had a warm drink yet. Uh, you can see, there's a wind whipping up here, uh, so I'm weighting all this side down with uh, branches, so I've got to go and get some more branches yet. And I think I know, might know where there's a bit of metal. Uh, if there is, I'm going to put it down in front of the fire because I'm not happy about just scooping a bit of that grass out. I know it's soaking wet and it hasn't stopped, you can see down there, it hasn't stopped freezing all day. Uh, so I best get a move on. I'm actually in the shelter, this is in front of the shelter. Uh, I'm not happy about the fire being on that ground but I do need a hot meal. So I'm going to get at least one hot meal in me and then put it out. I've got a bit of bracken in the shelter. I've got the polythene bags on the floor. And uh, I'll probably be cold, but uh, I am sheltered from the wind. One thing I forgot to mention, I didn't notice when I bought it, the water is strawberry flavoured. I should have spotted that, but uh, I didn't. Anyway, I'll just have to put up with it now. Another thing, uh, I never washed that tin out before I used it, so probably coated with some oil, but I'm not wasting my dinner now.
kneeling down and getting them soaking wet. Put that, put that. Out, of, out of the wind here it's not so bad. But other side of the shelter, you know, if I stand either side, there's a severe wind chill. bit cold, but I'm all right. <laughs> I better be all right. It's only, uh, it's only, was it four o'clock? It's only four o'clock. It's uh, pretty much at four o'clock. If I wandered out now, if I wandered outside, the sheet of poly I found, if I wandered outside and it got dark, I'd never find this place. Anyway, I was just having a test. I might, I might have a bit wander. Get a few more materials and get a bit of wood to jam that corner from flapping. Anyway, it's not too bad. Shame the ground wasn't a bit firmer because I don't I won't leave a fire out there because it'll go into the ground. I know it's soaking wet and it's middle of winter but it still doesn't look good. It's bloody freezing. So what I'm trying to do is I've got the tea lights in my baking dish and I'm trying to warm up two of those water bottles. So I might get two hot water bottles. Well my water bottle warmer is working but uh, there's certainly no chance of scalding myself. I've realised why my feet are so cold and that's because my socks are damp. So I'm trying to get my socks dried out one at a time and my feet and then they'll be a bit drier and then Hopefully, I might get some sleep sometime tonight. Always bring a spare pair of socks with you. Right, that's it for now. The battery's on red. It's perishingly cold. It's about one o'clock in the morning. So I've uh, remade my pack frame. I'm going to start to dismantle and I'll pack everything out that I packed in. And I'll take down the shelter and leave the wood uh, so that if I want to come back and rebuild it here, I can do. It's about two o'clock in the morning. I'm on my way back. I'm coming over the top of the hill. I'm coming down there somewhere. It's, the it's quite a spectacular view. Well, I did make it home safely in the dark. I started or I made the decision to pack up at one o'clock in the morning. And by the time I'd dismantled everything and packed up all the rubbish and tarpaulins, I got home about half past three. So that gave me three hours short of the 24 hours. So technically, I suppose, I failed. It was a long walk in and it was bad weather conditions. And I hadn't 
been able to recce the site before I went there. Uh, there was a few things that went to my favour though, and that's finding the tarpaulins, and especially the saw. And uh, the pack frame turned out to be a tremendous success, especially once I got some straps on it that uh, didn't keep snapping. So I learned a lot from it. Uh, there's one thing that I was doing uh, which was having a naked flame in the shelter and I appreciate the dangers of that uh, but uh, believe me that shelter was well ventilated uh, but uh, I don't recommend you try that in any tent or shelter. Just hang on a minute. Other little issues I'm aware of is the sound quality and probably the videoing quality as well, especially with the limitations with my uh, camera lens angles. But uh, some things we're just going to have to live with for now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.